Let's watch a single day go by when the moon is in its first quarter phase. As you can see, the first quarter moon rises in the east at noon, is highest in the sky at sunset, and it sets at midnight. In fact, if you know you're looking at a first quarter moon, you can tell time just by noticing where in its path across the sky the moon appears. The moon is harder to see in the daytime, but it is there. The only moon not visible at all at daytime is the full moon. This is because it is 180 degrees opposite to the sun in the sky, and so both can't be above the horizon at the same moment. The full moon rises at sunset, is highest overhead at midnight, and sets at dawn. The moon takes a month to orbit the Earth. This means each of the phases shown here are separated by roughly half a week. Starting at new moon, the moon is said to be waxing until it reaches full. A waxing moon will have its western side lit up. Why is the quarter moon called a quarter moon? Isn't it a half moon? Well, there are two ways to think about that. First of all, notice that at the quarter, the moon is a quarter away around in its orbit. Also, the full moon is a half moon since we see half the moon. The other half, on the other side, is dark and we can't see it anyway. In a quarter moon, you are literally seeing one quarter of the moon's surface. Between the new and quarter moon, we have a crescent moon. At all times in its orbit, half of the moon is lit up by the sun. When the moon is in crescent phase, we only see a sliver of that lit portion. The moon can be a waxing crescent or a waning crescent, depending on whether it is moving towards full or towards new. The gibbous moon is between the quarter moon and the full moon. We can see most of the moon's lit surface, but some of its nighttime surface. Before you go, there are a few things we should discuss. First, as we mentioned in the video, the scale of this diagram is not accurate. If we wanted the scale to be accurate, we would have put the moon roughly 10 times farther away. But that would be so hard to look at, so we've shrunk the scale. Keep this in mind. Second, you might be wondering how eclipses occur. Knowing that the moon is farther away than shown is helpful, but still, why isn't every full moon a lunar eclipse? Doesn't the moon fall into the shadow of the Earth? Likewise, why isn't every new moon a solar eclipse? Doesn't the moon cast a shadow on the Earth's surface? Well, what we have neglected to show here is that the moon doesn't orbit the Earth in the same plane as the Earth orbits the sun. The moon's orbit is tilted by five degrees. This means at full and new phase, the moon is often above, out of the screen, or below, into the screen, what is shown here just by a little bit, and that's enough to prevent an eclipse. For some reason, the moon presents a lot of misconceptions for people. We hope this simulation will help you sort it out.